In this video, I want to show you how you can use tree maps in Power BI. We're going to go through the basics of how to use it and some alternative ways that you can utilize it within your reports. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So tree maps is one of the out of the box visuals that you can use within Power BI, and it lets you see the proportions of your data in sort of nested triangles or rectangles. So let me show you. So here we have a data model, which is a very simple data model. It's a subset of the Northwind data sets. It has a few tables that we have imported as part of this. But the key important thing is that it gives us a sales of the different products across the span of this company. So we're not going to go through the kind of intricacies of the data model because that's not the focus for today. We're just going to look at the visuals. So if I just drag in, let's say, the categories of all of those different products that we sell, as well as the sales for each of them. So here, as you can see, if I rank this, it gives you sort of the numbers in total sales for each of these different categories. And you might want to kind of visualize this in a way that you can see the proportions much more in a way that is much more distinct. So we can convert this. Well, actually, let's not convert this. Let's just keep the table here so that you can see the actual values. And then we're going to copy it. And the, this one, we're going to convert into a tree map. So this is how a tree map looks like. So the tree map you will see are a bunch of connected rectangles of all of the different categories. You can see all of them are kind of labeled by the categories. And the size of the rectangles are determined by the total number of sales that they have. So the bigger the rectangle, the bigger the sales in proportion to everything else. So as you can see, it's kind of a lot easier to see which categories are the biggest contributors as a whole. Let's look at a few things that you can do to customize your tree maps. So if I select that, let's look at the formatting pane here on the right hand side. So we have a few things here like the colors, for example, you can change the different individual colors of your categories. So you can assign them different colors and assign them for yourself. You can use conditional formatting to adjust them manually. So you might want to add some logic to say if it's beverages, then it should be always this color or you can choose sort of using gradients and and a gradient is a good way to kind of show if you want to show sort of heat map style visual to signify the bigger the sale number is, the darker the shade of the color is. So if you ju just do sales like this, for example, and just choose gradient, you hit OK, it will, as you can see, the darker the shades, the bigger the proportion this category is. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to remove that for now. Along with the colors, as you can see, the category labels is already turned on. This is the category labels that you see on each of these rectangles just turned on by default. So you can see which categories those are, or you can have them as legends, which is also another option that you can have. Another option here that you might think about turning on are the date labels underneath the rectangles. This would show the actual sales value that the tree map is using to size those rectangles accordingly. So you might want to see those values, those row values as they are. If you want a further breakdown of your tree map, you have in the build section here, the ability to add more details, which would split up these categories even further. So for example, if we add a detail here to see the products that contributes to that total of your category, it adds those slices within those sections. So I'm going to just focus on this quickly, just so that we can see. And the idea with this tree map is that you can see beverages as a whole, but also which product within beverages contributed to the highest sales for that category. Now, while tree map is a good way to show sort of proportions of, you know, how much sales it is in proportion to the whole, I don't typically recommend it because it has sort of the same problems that pie charts typically have. The first thing is that if you have too many categories or details, it can be a little bit difficult to see, you know, what the difference is between two values that have roughly the same sales in proportion and by how much they are different against. So that's why I've not really covered tree map 
so much in this channel. However, that doesn't mean that we can't use tree maps. So let me give you a few different alternative ways that you can use tree maps within your reports. So the first thing that you can do is you can use tree maps as a way to create more colorful slicers than what is currently available by default. So let me show you, first of all, how a slicer looks like, which I'm going to just create a slicer here. And if I change this into a tile, for example, so this is how a typical slicer looks like in Power BI. Now, this slicer by itself, it works. However, there's not a lot of kind of customization options that you can do here, aside from changing the color, you know, like the, the font color or the highlight color or the border color of these selections. But with tree maps, you can create a sort of slicer visual, like a tile like this, with the ability to change the individual colors of your categories that you select. And because of how Power BI works with this cross filtering capability, you are kind of able to use it the same way that you use a slicer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in category name like this. I'm just going to deselect that and uh, we're going to add or we'll just change it into a tree map now. This one. And then the key thing is to make sure that they're all the same size. And the way that we can keep them the same size is by just having a count here. So they're all just have one value in this category. So that's why I know that they will always be a similar size. I'm going to remove the ID title there and just resize it like this. And that's how easy it is to have a slicer using tree maps. So as you can see, you can use it the same way that you can use a slicer visual, except that you have full control over the colors in this slicer pane. So you can change the color of these categories or even conditionally format them if you wanted to. The only thing to bear in mind if you're doing this is that you don't have, or at least we don't have full control over how your categories are adjusted. So at the moment, it works like this as a tile. However, if you try to do it vertically like this, as you can see, they are sort of adjusting automatically and there is no way in the formatting section for you to control them and say they should all be the same size or layout. If you sort them out and lay them out horizontally like this, it seems to work just fine. So if you're using tiles like this, tree maps is a kind of good option for you. The next interesting thing that you can do and uh, you can use tree maps for is by creating sort of progress bars natively in Power BI without using any sort of custom visuals. So you might want to use this, for example, if you want to show, let's say, a value against a specific target and you want to show what the difference is between those two. You can do this quite easily, actually, in, in Power BI using tree maps. So we have the sales value here, which I'm going to put sales value here. I'm just going to put this into a card like this, which obviously it changes as we select different categories of values here. And then I also have a target, which I've already created. So this is the target that we want the, uh, the categories to be aiming for. And this is just a flat 150,000. And there's no logic in this. I just put 150,000 here. What I want to do is as I select values here in my category, I want to see how far each category is from this target that we've set. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a measure for calculating the remaining value. So remaining like this, and we're going to create an if statement. So the if statement is just to make sure that if our category sale has um, surpassed 150,000, we don't want to show the whole thing. We just want to show up to the target. So if the sales is greater than the target, give me the remaining between the target and sales. Otherwise it's zero. So now what this will do is if we add sales and remaining changes into a tree map. And uh, there's nothing selected here at the moment, but if we select, let's say grains or meat and poultry, it's doing a cross highlighting, which we actually don't want to do. So we're going to go to edit interactions and just change that into cross filtering. So if we choose, let's say meat and produce, I'm just going to find one that kind of surpasses 
the value that we we're looking for. So sales. Okay. Let me just double check and make sure I'm doing the right thing here. Oh, I have messed this one up. So it needs to be sales is less than the target. That's what it's doing incorrectly. So it should be doing this. So if the sales for what you have selected is less than the target, it should calculate the remaining. And what we want to do is highlight it gray. So I'm going to just change this into a tree map like this. And basically this is what we want. The only thing is obviously we would just want to make the remaining gray. And you might want to add the data label as well, just to see how far you are from that from reaching that target. So as you can see, it's giving us the total sales and then the remaining. And if you've surpassed that value, it just gives you the value in total without showing any remaining because this category has reached that target. So that way you basically have a progress sort of bar charts using tree maps without really using any custom visuals. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to start using tree map within your reports as well as knowing and understanding some of the alternatives that you can use this visual with. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't. So to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.